service and the day as from the beginning to the end listening and so the Lord was reiterating the things that he's we're going to say now and if you'll turn to Psalms 100 we've got five verses here we're going to read and ask if you would graciously stand again There, say amen. Okay. Beginning at verse 1. <clears throat> Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. Together, for the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Praise the Lord. Pray with me. Father, thank you for um, today. We thank you for the saints. Thank you for the house of God. Thank you for the people of God. Thank you for all the things that you're doing. Lord, I pray that today that this simple, short word message will be a blessing to all that hear. May it remind us, O oh God, of your goodness and our obligation. In the precious name of Jesus, we will give you the glory. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Thank the Lord for those that were able to be out to the outreach this week. We enjoyed thoroughly. We thank the Lord. Just so, so good. Hallelujah. I said, Lord, I, I'd, I'd rather be out there reaching the lost. I really would. And, uh, uh, you know, there were some conditions there, but we were out there. I thank the Lord for those that uh, desired to be there and couldn't be there, but I thank the Lord for those that were able to make it. So um, we want to work on discipling those that were drawn to the Lord. And um, I believe that's one of the areas that we have to strengthen uh, in our lives, that is discipleship and or follow-up. So we're going to be doing that, and some of you will be calling on you to uh, aid us in that process, assigning people to you, and it's if you will be that big brother, big sister, and uh, so until they get to the place where they can begin to walk and grow spiritually. Is that all right? Amen. 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 I find that uh, a lot of times we touch people's lives, and... Uh, some of them have been <clears throat> in and out of church for so long, and yet when they falter or fall short, uh, there's no one there to reach out to help them, and so they continually struggle year after year. But um, I believe if we have someone that will be assigned to their lives and help them to apply the principles of life, they can overcome and they can be, they can grow and be better saints. So that's the desire. All right. I want to talk about something that uh, you, you probably hear a lot that's uh, implied in Psalms 100, and that is being grateful. This past week, as we were just enjoying the Lord, we were listening to an older song. And this older song. Um, be grateful and my wife and I and Jessica was there in the car and as we heard the words words be grateful all three of us simultaneously wham felt it so I said wow Wanda said the same, oh, you felt that too, you felt that. 
it was like a release from the spirit. Be grateful. And um, so I've been meditating upon that. And so as I was preparing, I felt him wanted to sh us to share that with you today. Be grateful. Gratitude is something that it may be a scarcity in this land that we're living in. So many people are going through so much. And when you look at the news, it doesn't make you happy. It's challenging, but and some people have even said, where is God in the midst of this? He never changes. He's still in place. And so I hope that uh, as we share a little briefly that it will cause some, some of us or not all of us to think more deeply concerning gratitude, being grateful. Gratitude or grateful is showing an appreciation of kindness, showing an appreciation of kindness. It also means thankful, coming from a root word which means pleasing, agreeable, thankful. And thankful means pleased and relieved. Thankful means expressing gratitude and relief. You've heard the expression, I'm thankful to be alive. It, I'm pleased and I'm grateful to be alive because I could have been dead. Could have been six feet under. But it was absolutely nothing that I did because I'm here in a vertical position. Nothing. So I am grateful, and I know you are grateful as well. Appreciation. I'm going to give, I mean, two brief words for gratitude is appreciation and thankfulness. Appreciation, can you say it with me? Appreciation and thankfulness. So when I read Psalms 100, he says, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord, how? With gladness. And when we come before his presence, we have another attitude of joyfulness, that is with singing, right? And he says, do you not know or know ye that the Lord, he is God? It is he that has made us. We didn't make ourselves, right? We are his people. Thank you, Jesus. And the sheep of his pasture. So God likened us to sheep. And sheep, needs constant care. Sheep, if sheep fall, I'm told, on their back or they fall, they can't get up. And if someone or the shepherd don't come and pick them up, they'll lie there and die because of the heaviness of the wool. And God likened us to sheep. Doesn't it say something about us as people? We have need of God. Hallelujah. So the psalmist says, make a joyful shout unto the Lord. That's really what it means. Serve the Lord with gladness. Be glad in the Lord. And, and um, you, you know, when you look at children, a parent that has three or four children, two or three, and if you look at the children and they're so, they look so happy, they're so excited. It says something about the parents. So it is with God. God, we are his people, right? And we reflect his goodness when we have a grateful attitude, 
when we have an appreciation for him and when we serve him with a glad heart. God is pleased and then it will give us occasion for witnessing. In this day and hour, people are looking for glad hearts. Isn't that right? People that have a positive outlook, people that have expectations that things are going to work out in the midst of things. So we are to serve the Lord with gladness. The psalmist says, be glad in the Lord. Do not be sad. Do not be discouraged. Do not be overwhelmed or overtaken by problems, but be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. We are his people. And uh, since we are his people, we're, uh, he wants us. So now, gratitude is appreciation and thankfulness. Let me read a couple of scriptures and I'll read some more later. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans 1 quickly. Romans 1 says, verse 20, For the invisible things of him, talking about God, our creator, from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being, somebody say understood, by the things that are made. The invisible qualities and attributes of the Almighty are clearly understood by his creation. Even the, his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful. God somehow looked at that upon those that Romans was speaking about in the, uh, uh, the heathen world. Uh, so that was an indictment. They, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. They, they, they perhaps treated him like he was so much less than God that maybe that he, he wasn't a good God at all. Maybe he, he really didn't take care of his children. They glorified him not as God. Did you catch that? Neither were thankful, full of thanks. But they became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened. Well, how does gratitude originate? How does it come about? Uh, the book of Proverbs, chapter 2 says, For the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. How does it originate? With understanding coming from our creator. God gives understanding as to what we're all about and why we should be grateful. Isn't that right? If any man lack wisdom, then he said, let him ask of God who gives freely, liberally, and doesn't scold or upbraid. So verse 6 says, for the Lord gives wisdom, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. He lays up sound wisdom for the righteous. So we are righteous people, isn't that right? Since we are righteous, then God wants us to have wisdom. Somebody say wisdom. He wants us not only to have knowledge, but understanding. Uh, and I was reading the other day, and God was quickening me. to says, uh, an understanding heart, a heart that understands. It's so important, isn't that right? So when we're serving the Lord, he wants us to serve him with a glad heart. He wants us to be glad I was lost and undone and without God or his son. When he reached down his hands 
for me. He rescued me who was going down for the last time. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the shore of peace. Uh, and, and, but, but the Savior, when he saw me sinking and shifting, sailing away into a lost eternity, he reached out his hands and rescued me. Oh, I don't know about you, but it makes me want to be grateful to God. I must not uh, uh, look at the little things that happen to me and make them bigger than life. Isn't that right? I must, be, I must keep things in the proper perspective. Isn't that right? Mm. This is what God loves when we can keep things in a proper perspective. Uh, so I had a bad day. So you had a bad day. It doesn't matter. We are saved. We've been still delivered out of darkness into the marvelous light of God. And as long as we keep that perspective, we can have joy. Oh, isn't that right? Come on, give God a praise. Being grateful to the Lord. Being grateful. An attitude of appreciation. Now, if it originates with God-given knowledge and understanding, it helps us. Let's say a man walked without understanding. He was grumbling and complaining all of his life. Because he never, his heart never um, came into understanding. And then he gets saved and then God begins to impart knowledge. He begins to pull the cover off the word as he began to look at it. And God began to show him that uh, it's not so bad after all. He says, your better days are ahead. But I want you to look up and live. Isn't that right? And so now his heart has gained some understanding. And so he does not walk with his head down anymore. There is hope. There is expectation in him. Isn't that right? So it is when we come to God, there's hope. Hallelujah. Jesse Jackson said, keep hope alive. Isn't that right? Sir? Keep looking unto him. The Bible says, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I've got some news for you. He that has begun the good work in you. If he was so mighty and powerful to when we were dead sinners and aliens uh, to bring us out of darkness to light, uh, I just got to believe that he's able to get us to the other side. Uh, hallelujah. The Bible says, serve the Lord with a glad heart. Uh, somebody shout glory to the Lord. Uh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Now, now we understand this. We understand that there is uh, an enemy of our soul. We, we understand that. Uh, and this enemy's purpose uh, is to constantly bombard us with lies uh, and deception so that we will not uh, enter into grace with thanksgiving uh, and serve the Lord with a glad heart. It is his task, just like it is God's task to get us to the other side, it is his task to keep badgering us uh, and to make things appear worse than what they are and to make us feel hopeless. Uh, but I've got some news for you today. Jesus came that you might live uh, and he wants you to live the life full of joy, full of peace uh, because he says, uh, my sheep hear my voice, uh, a stranger they will not hear because they know not the voice of a stranger. Serve the Lord with a glad heart. Let nothing interfere with your joy. Hallelujah. Because God started this thing in you. It wasn't your idea. Hallelujah. I wasn't smart enough to do it. When I was an enemy of God, he had mercy. Somebody shout mercy. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So it starts with an understanding, understanding that God loves you in spite of what these forces are saying. Understand that, that God is going to get you to the other side in spite of your challenges. Understanding that God is not upset with you. Understanding that God has wiped your slate 
clean. Understanding that your names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Understanding, hallelujah, that it's not so bad after all. Understanding that when I keep my focus, I still can see the light of glory in the midst of a dark situation. Hallelujah. It starts with understanding. Hallelujah. Now listen what he, the psalmist says. Um, he said, it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. Wow. And God formed man from the dust of the ground. And he blew breath into his nostrils and man became a living soul. Nothing took place until the wind of God blew into our nostrils um, the breath of life uh, for life comes through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can praise God when it looks dark. You can praise God when it looks dim. And you can serve the Lord with gladness as long as I've got Jesus. As long as I've got Jesus, I can receive a miracle at any time because the miracle worker is with me. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So it starts with an understanding. How can a person move from ingratitude to gratitude? Understanding. When you look into the word of God, you can even ask God, Lord, give me understanding. Open my heart to truth. Help me to see things beyond where I am. Uh, you may be in a low bar. You may be in a low place. You may be in a place uh, where it looks dark and dim and gray. You may be in a place where, where it looks like the heavens of brass. You may be in a place where you cannot understand why God has allowed this to happen. You may be in a place, uh, but remember this. You are coming through this. Yeah. Hallelujah. You're coming through this because the hand of God is mighty on your life. Hallelujah. You're coming through that. When Jesus was at the cross, he knew that his purpose was being about to be fulfilled. And he said, Father, if it be possible, just let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but yours be done. Uh, Sometimes the hardest places that we go through in life is just before the most powerful breakthrough that we can ever imagine. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stay the course. Hallelujah. Hang on in there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Why is it important to Gratitude, appreciation, and thankfulness toward the Lord. My God. We say that it originates when God gives us understanding. The third thing I want to mention is uh, why is it important? Why is being grateful important? It's, understanding, it's, it's important because of God's mercy. New mercies every day. The Bible says if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you feel like that? If it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would I be? My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's mercy. And then when I feel short of receiving mercy, God has, God has established a throne of grace and mercy. 
It's like a never drying fountain. So when I need mercy, he said I can come with confidence to the throne room, hallelujah, where I can obtain more mercy. Isn't that right? Um, if you need more mercy, understand where you gotta go to get mercy, hallelujah. You can't go and borrow a loan and get mercy, isn't that right? That, that won't give you the kind of mercy that you need, isn't that right? But you can go to the throne of God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. There's so much mercy. L listen, there's so much mercy awaiting every believer. There's, the Bible says he's rich in mercy. Wow. He's rich and that mercy goes on and on and on and on if I've got mercy for the day and it sustained me guess what when I get up in the morning new mercies are awaiting for me glory to God hallelujah glory to God mercy is important to be grateful because of God's mercy he's a merciful God I heard another writer says he has not dealt with us after our sins. So we must thank him, isn't that right? We must be glad in the Lord. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, I remember about 20, 30 some years ago, I was at a low place and I was so low, and I was so low and so mad. So mad because God wouldn't seem to help me. It looked like he would. And all of a sudden, so and I was going around there and said, it can't get no worse than this. And every time I'd say it, it'd get worse. Somebody said, you need to change your confession. Isn't that right? <laughs> I had to change my confession. But after I began to change my confession, then my situation started to change. I, 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 are you hearing me today? Hallelujah. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you saying? What you saying? My God, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah, why is it important? Because of God's mercy. And then the other thing he said is why it's important is because um, gratitude makes you pleasant. Gratitude makes you a pleasant person, a person that's pleasant to be around. You see, you don't want to be around old Groucho Mark because Groucho may, something may come out of his mouth that depress you, isn't that right? So we got to, Hallelujah, so, 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 so it makes you pleasant to be around. Hallelujah, if you're around somebody and you, you may be discouraged and they say, brother, it's gonna work out, don't worry. It's gonna work out because God is faithful. That gives you hope, isn't that right? Makes you feel better. I remember one time a situation, there was a, a lady that was a counselor. She was supposed to be a counselor and people calling in. And boy, when she got finished with them telling them about her problem, she was supposed to be in the counselor to encourage people. One day that she called, <laughs> she began to tell them how many operations she had. So the lady that was supposed to be encouraged, she says, well, I see you got your problems too. <laughs> but it makes you pleasant to be around, isn't that right? Be grateful to the Lord. Let's be grateful. And when I'm grateful, then people don't mind being around me. Isn't that right? Because I'm sending out some positive signals. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to have a good attitude. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. I believe that. So it makes us pleasant. The other thing about why it's important to be grateful, because it gives favor. It gives us favor. Yes. It gives us favor because being grateful is what God wants out of our lives. You remember what I said? God said if I can get people to change their attitude, I'd change the situation. So it gives us favor. 
Sometimes there's disfavor because God's not able to get us where we, with that attitude. You know, lift your hands and say, you know what, it's going to work out anyway. God says it's going to work out. So I, I, I'm not stressing over this no more. I'm not stressing over that. I, I, I'm going to trust God in this situation. I'm going to go on and sing. Hallelujah. Going to go on and lift my hands and give God some praise. And, and before you know it, this thing started working out. Because you know what? Because the one that's oppressing you in that area, he's not, it's not working no more. So he just moves on somewhere else. Be glad in the Lord. Let's be grateful. Isn't that right? Let's express appreciation to God who is our creator. He loves us so much. He cares for us. So why is it important to be grateful? Because of God's mercy. Because it makes us a pleasant people. And it gives favor to us. It turns, you know, the Bible says, and when they began to thank and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent an ambushment against the enemy. So it gives favor with God. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. It gives favor with God when we have a thankful attitude. Okay. And then the last thing is it's, uh, that he said, it stabilizes us. People with bad attitudes find themselves leaving, quitting jobs, leaving churches, and doing a whole lot of things like that, leaving marriages. Why? Because of their attitude. Well, I don't want to get into that, but anyway. But the point that I'm trying to make is this. It's important because it stabilizes us. It makes you know that things are going to work out because you, you, when you have a right attitude, you know what? It's going to work out. God's going to work this thing out. You know, it's in his hands, you know. It, so it stabilized me. When I would jump up and run, then I'll calm right down. I said, no, God's going to work this thing out. It stabilizes me. It keeps me from jumping ship. Isn't that right? It keeps me from going and doing something different. Thankfulness. So the Lord says, serve the Lord with a glad heart. Be glad in the Lord. Lord, I thank you that things could be so much worse. But God, I'm going to thank you right now. Hallelujah. Like I said, you know, I, and one thing I'm, I, 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 um, after my first wife passed, uh, the devil said to me, no, I'm, I'm not just taking one. In other words, he's trying to sell me a wooden nickel. But no, I'm going to take you too. That's, that's what he was saying. And as weird as that sounds, I was in a low place. And it wasn't easy for me to shake it off. I had to fight that lie and that deception because of where I was. Are you hearing what I'm saying? But God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory. <laughs> Woo. But God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Did you feel that? But God. Hallelujah. Who is rich in mercy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He looked beyond my fault. And he saw my need. The mercies of God are so great. Hallelujah. You got to thank him and you got to love him. Isn't that right? He's a good savior. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. I, I remember one time I was, he was teaching me to praise him in the midst of challenges. And it seemed so hard because I was going by how I felt. And I kept hearing, do not lean to your own. And it seemed so hard at times. I says, well, I don't understand. If, and, but his faithfulness, yeah. he kept right on, kept right on until I began to get it. Oh, wow. You can't live by your feelings. It finally began to register. You can't live by your feelings. This is a faith walk. Isn't that right? This is a faith walk. Now the just shall live by faith. Isn't that right? So faith says, 
it's going to work out when nothing seemed to look right. God is pleased when we express faith in him, faith in his care, faith in his providence, right? Faith in his ability to sustain us. And that's what happens. He sustains us. We're not sustaining ourselves, brothers and sisters. It is God's hand. He's a wonderful Savior. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So it stabilizes us. It's important to know that it stabilizes us. How many jobs are lost? How many marriages end? Because somebody was not grateful. They did not allow gratitude, not for the person, but toward him. Are you hearing me? One day I was upset with the Lord because I was walking toward my understanding. I was leaning on it. And God said, you don't trust me. I said, what? But I knew there was truth in it. I didn't have to do a lot of searching. I, I knew. And the Bible says the heart knows its own bitterness. Ain't know what Proverbs say. So I knew there was an element of truth in it. So I said, well, so why? Why don't I trust you? He said, because of unreliable people. In other words, you equate God's faithfulness with people. And if, when you do that, you sell yourself short. Isn't that right? God is faithful. With men is impossible. But with God, nothing shall be impossible. So I began to get my eyes off who did this and what the, that kind of happened. I said, well, wait a minute. Well, God didn't do that then. So he remains the same. Isn't that right? Just and true are all of his ways. God is forever good and always righteous. If he could have his way in every situation, now things would be different. But it doesn't always happen. You know, God gives us a free will. And so sometimes people do what they want to do, right? So I had to learn that. It was not an easy, easy lesson, but I believe I'm, I'm closer to learning it than I was. Isn't that right? <laughs> Praise the Lord. What are you saying? I'm saying don't let nothing take your joy. God is good. Hallelujah. Deserves praise and glory and honor. 365 days to the year. When we come here, this is supposed to be just a spillover. Isn't that right? Not a pumping up, but a spillover. Come on, y'all. Isn't that right? Overflowing with joy. Oh, my God, I can hardly get to the sanctuary. God has been so good Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. He's been so good to me. I, 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 I just can't hardly wait to get amongst the saints. I, I just want to tell them, hallelujah, God has been so good to me. Ah, glory to God. And see, so this is supposed to be a spill over here. And when the praise team come up here, the glory should just flow so easy because uh, now we have an overflowing joy by the power and presence of God. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Just wonderful. So wonderful. Oh, I couldn't say that 30 years ago. I said it, but it wasn't in my heart. <laughs> I had lip service. But I got more than lip service now. Yeah. You may be where, somebody may be where I was 30 years ago. But I want to encourage you. God will get you there because of his faithfulness. He loves you just that much. He doesn't give up on us. He's a good savior. Hallelujah. He's in it to win. Glory to God. He's in it to win. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So he's not moved by our discouragement. He loves us. He's a good father. Hallelujah. 
Serve the Lord with gladness, somebody. Give him a shout of praise, somebody. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. My God, hallelujah. Well, then, what are the hindrances to gratitude? First thing he said was ignorance. Ignorance to spiritual understanding. Ignorance to principles and relationship. Ignorance. So he said, my people are destroyed for a, a lack of knowledge. So that means the more knowledge and understanding God gives us, the easier it is to be grateful because now we have understanding. We understand that gratitude is a thing that we ought to have because of what God has done for us. So we are forever keeping in view what God has done through Calvary. God has been too good. He saved us from a devil's hell. And he's with us. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So he's right there by our side. Isn't that right? He sent the paraclete. He sent the Holy Ghost there. Hallelujah. And to guide us and to keep us and to strengthen us. God is with us. So you really can't. It's hard not to make it with what God has done. Hallelujah. He's done that much for us. He even says, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. He's already given it to the knowledge of God. And one of those, part of that understanding is just being grateful to God. Purpose. That's purpose to be grateful. Sometimes it doesn't always happen when we, and I'll tell you some reason why I write in in a few seconds but the goal of being grateful is important right you know you can target a lot of things in life but one of the spiritual goals that's important is learning to be grateful that is a very good endeavor a very good because to be grateful is just wonderful it will bring us into more blessings, Amen. spiritual blessings and otherwise, being grateful to God. I hope that somebody is grabbing a hold of this. It is so important. This is what God has given, just learning to be grateful. I'm going to be grateful. I'm determined to be grateful. Isn't that right? Amen. Hallelujah to God. Because God you know what? I, I remember. <laughs> Have you ever gone through and you're just trying to believe that God is good, but you, you're mad with him and you're frustrated, you know, and you're just, you're just kind of lip servicing, yeah, God is good. Well, I was there one day, and, uh, and every time something would happen that would bug me, I'd get mad at God. And he said, son, I'm good. <laughs> In other words, look, you're struggling. He said, but I'm good. <laughs> you know, I, I love how he's been patient with me. I mean, mm, I know he loves me. I know he loves me because he's patient. So what are the hindrances? Ignorance, spiritual understanding. You know, God wants to give us more understanding. And even as he's doing right now, he's given us understanding. He's given us understanding how important it is to be grateful to God. A gratitude, you know. Take the mother that has two sons. And one son, she gave them both the same thing. And one of them, he wanted more. So he just wasn't satisfied. And he fussed and complained. Mama said, well, boy. I gave you the same that I gave Joe, but for some reason, he wasn't satisfied. But gratitude, it just made that mother when the other son just said, Mommy, I thank you so much. I know, you know, you had your own um, 
you know, you had to pay bills and all this stuff, but I, I really appreciate you doing this. Boy, that mother's heart, it just warms her heart because the son was grateful. Isn't that right? Same way with God. He loves us. Remember the ten lepers? Ten got, ten got healed. Now them went on about their business, never returned to say thank you. Then there was one came back when he saw he was healed. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He was so grateful. Came back to God, just thanking him. God said, well, uh, there were ten of you. Where are the nine? I heal all of them. Somebody said, wow. <laughs> but look at, look at God's expectation. He said, where the, where, the, where, where, the nine, where the rest of them? In other words, I expected all of them to come back and give me thanks. How many times have God healed us in this place? Uh, how many times have God healed us? Uh, <laughs> hallelujah. Glory to God. It, don't you agree that it's time to be grateful? Come on, y'all. Hallelujah. God is good. My God, he's a good God. He's so good. He's a wonderful God. Of having the understanding and know that when we are grateful, God does more. Hallelujah. And then what, what are the hindrances? Ignorance. The other thing he said, unhealed memories is sometimes is a reason why some people find it hard to be grateful. Pain in the memories. You know, Sally got hit and uh, had a trauma, and she's never gotten over that trauma. She's still saved, still God's child, but she's got that trauma. And that trauma comes up, the memory, ever so often, and it hinders her from being grateful. Every time she tries to be thankful, it take, Satan remind her of what happened to her. So he takes her back. So the Lord said, sometimes you know, some people struggle with in, in gratitude is because they need healing of memories. Some of those memories are still painful. And so Satan, guess what? He's just going to bring it up because he's out to hinder. Isn't that right? He'll go take you right back to that moment and everything and the emotions and everything. But when God heals those memories, he can't be effective anymore in that area. Isn't that right? Yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, give God praise. He's worthy. <laughs> Sometimes these are hindrances to gratitude. This is what he said. Trust issues, right? Fears. Just trust. I had that lack of trust with God. And what was funny, 11 years ago, we got married and after Betty passed, and Wanda, we'd be praying and she says, God, I trust you with my life. I trust you with my life. And I'm thinking, I don't think I can trust him yet. Because I had that trauma. Y'all gotta hear what I'm saying. I had that trauma so something wasn't sitting well with me and God. I couldn't figure out, why would you let this happen? So when she, but she says, God, I trust you with my life. And I didn't tell her then. But I was like, how can she trust you fully like that, God? I told her later. <laughs> and we laugh about it now. But today, God, I trust you with my life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because he healed that memory that had pained me. And he want to do the same for some of you today. You that are watching me by way of television, somebody here has a painful memory and you hear what I'm saying and you know, you, you want to so bad but there's a memory that God has to go there with you. I want you to open your heart wide now because God's got a healing for you. Yes, you sir. You that God's talking to, yes, yes. 
He's got a healing for you. Lift your hands right now and give God glory. And the power of the Lord is going to come on you right now. Father, I thank you for him right now. In Jesus' name, glory to God. Woo, I felt that. Mm. Woo, glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. I'm hastening to conclusion. What's the solution? See, let's see Jesus as the solution. Let's see him as the solution. Don't look no further than Jesus. He said, I'm come that the sheep might have life. That they might have it more abundantly. He wants you to enjoy life. He wants you to have life to the full. Hallelujah. That's why he came. And he will not alter his purpose for us. We agree with God. Let's agree with him. Jesus came that I might live. He came that I might have full life. Life to the full, meaning joy, enjoying the kingdom, peace, the full benefits of life. That's why he came. And so it's ours, as Pam was sharing earlier, it's ours. It's ours. Hallelujah. He's the solution for crippling conditions, right? He's the solution for the cripple, people that are born with defects. Guess what? There was a man born blind. But Jesus met him and he healed him. Hallelujah. There was a man that was lame from his mother's womb. Sat at the gate there when the apostles was going in and the church was going in to give praise at the hour of prayer. And finally one day, Peter and John was going to the, to the synagogue, the sanctuary. And as they were going in, the man was sitting there and begged so long. And then he said, look on us. He said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. And all of a sudden, that was the day that changed this man's life forever. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 38 years God changed his life. Uh, let's see Jesus as the answer. Isn't that right? He's the answer. He's the solution to the problem. Glory to God. He's the solution to all anger and unforgiveness. He's the solution. Hallelujah. And then uh, God says something. God says counseling. Uh, some part of the solution God uses in counseling. He was reminding me uh, as I was driving along. He says, he said, there are some places, deep places in people's lives that requires more time invested and a healing prayer for God to uncover some of the difficulties that go deep down in the soul of humankind. And it really encouraged me because I've been doing a lot of counseling. But today, he just, as I was driving along, he says, there's some that's just counseling is what he will choose to go and heal and uncover unhealed memories and areas in people's lives. God is a good God. He's a wonderful Savior. And uh, so God is the solution no matter how he works and what he does, right? Jesus is the solution. Look at somebody and say, Jesus is your solution. Jesus is your solution. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. All right. Now we're going to conclude with a few scriptures here. I want you to. Uh, turn to Ephesians chapter 5. God is good. Oh, what a wonderful Savior. I hope you'll go on your way home and you just start praising God. And when you get in your home, if things don't look right, you start praising the Lord. Say, you know, I got that word. I'm not letting it go. Uh-uh. I'm going to praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And God's going to bless you. Ephesians 5. Look at verse 19. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks, how? Always for what? All things to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus. Oh, somebody says, okay, I thank the Lord when I get into the sanctuary. Because it's easy. Giving thanks to God. 
for all things. Right? Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. So, all right. Now, go on to Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4. Are you there? Verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious. Be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God, which passes all understanding. So keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Turn a little further, Colossians chapter 1. Verse 10, verse 9, for this cause, we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord to all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power unto all patience and long suffering with what? Joyfulness. Doing what? Giving thanks to the Father which hath made us fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Turn to chapter 3 in Colossians. Verse 15 and let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also you're called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, doing what? Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Colossians 4, verse 2. Continue in prayer and watch in the same. How? With thanksgiving. Wow. Look at that. First Thessalonians chapter 5. Move on over a little bit more. Verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Last scripture. Hebrews. Hebrews 13. Hebrews 13 says, are you there? Okay. Verse 13. Let us go forth therefore to him without the camp, outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come. By him, verse 15, therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks to his name. Somebody bless the Lord. Hallelujah. God is worthy of thanks. It is learning and appreciating how to serve. God loves us. He cares for us. Stand with me if you will. Praise the Lord.